Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about feminism and the direction that I see feminism has gone in for most of its existence, and a way that I think it's not on a great path, and it's not going to really achieve the goals that it theoretically wants to achieve, which is the goal of gender equality. I see this trend in feminism of feminism pushing for women to, for lack of a better term, become more like men, without men necessarily becoming more like women. So you see a push for women to move into traditional male roles, but without a corresponding opening up of the roles for men, too. You see this in the clothing, even. So you see it in really simple stuff. Like, in our society, it has become pretty widely socially acceptable for women to do almost all of the things in their dress and visual presentation that men do. So, for example, short haircuts, all the range of haircuts that men have, it's generally considered normal for women to have those haircuts, too. The other way around, you really don't see. Uh, you see men with longer hair, but you really don't see men with, like, feminine-looking haircuts. And the same goes for clothing. Like, how often do you see men wearing dresses? Wearing skirts? Not very often. It's completely acceptable, though, for women to wear pants, and it has been for a really long time. And this is just the superficial stuff. I think the same trend exists on a much deeper level. Like, you have um, women moving into traditionally male jobs and roles, but you don't have the opposite happening quite as much. And there's a sort of economic and power disparity reason for this. Like, a lot of the traditional male roles pay more in terms of jobs, and so there's kind of less reward for men moving into these traditionally female jobs if they're like lower status and have lower pay. And I think this is getting at something really deep, which is that our society doesn't just elevate men above women. I think we've kind of moved beyond that. I think that what there is, is that we have these constructs of masculinity and femininity, and we elevate the construct of masculinity over the construct of femininity, independently of who is exhibiting those things. And I see feminism, unfortunately, directly playing into this in a number of ways. And one of them is through ways of thinking and communicating. It's an unfortunate sort of cultural association that I think has a lot of truth to it, which is that when people think of feminism, a lot of people think of women communicating in a sort of pushy or abrasive style. And this is something that bothers me a lot. Like, I care a lot about communication style, and I take great lengths to communicate in a way that is respectful towards others. I don't want to overstate the confidence I have in my opinion. I don't want to exaggerate. I don't want to exaggerate the amount of evidence I have supporting my viewpoint. And I want to speak about other people's perspectives and opinions in a way that makes clear that I generally trust that most people are reasonable people, and most people have reasons for believing the things that they do. I tend to want to present my opinion as opinion, as my feelings, my thoughts. I use a lot of I statements, so I say, I think this, I feel this. And I also use qualifying statements. I'm not afraid to say, I think this might be true, but I'm not sure, or like, in my experience, this is true. And I've read a lot of feminist literature that talks about how this way of communicating that I tend to communicate is a more feminine style of communication. That, like, women, either on their own or by social conditioning, are more likely to communicate in that way. And that men don't. Men are 
more likely to communicate in this more kind of, it's called like a direct or strong way. I don't like those terms though. I don't necessarily think it's more direct and I certainly don't think it's more strong. This gets at something really deep. But the, the idea is that men are more likely to communicate in this sort of like, this is the way it is, like, oh, this is true. Uh, like, I, it's sort of like speaking in an authoritative tone, but without necessarily acknowledging or, or sharing the evidence behind your perspective and not acknowledging that it is your perspective. And I find this way of speaking disrespectful. And what bothers me about feminism is that I've seen much more push for women to move in that more sort of domineering style of communication, to move into that style of communication, than I have seen for men or for people across the board to move into that more consensual, respectful form of communication. I ideally would like us to all embrace that more respectful way of communication, independently of our genders. But I think that this sort of failure that I see on behalf of feminism is really deep and really serious. Like, it, it's failing to break down one of the key ways in which our society has elevated masculinity over femininity. And I'm putting those in quotes because I think there's a large degree to which a lot of this stuff is arbitrary, like it's not necessarily innate about being a woman or being a man, but I think it, it's going on. And you see it in the political process. So like right now, I think our political system is favoring people who have an aggressive communication style. Biggest example, who is president right now? He has a very aggressive communication style. He states things as fact rather than as his opinions or feelings. He tends to exaggerate a lot. He tends to state things that there's very little evidence for. Um, it's almost like a caricature of all the worst things of this like masculine style of communicating. And what's really ironic, I see a lot of people criticizing the current administration of this country, and they're criticizing it using those very same communication patterns. And like, it, there's an irony in that, and it's sort of weird to me that people don't see that. I see it very clearly. Um, and I see this especially coming out of feminist rhetoric. I see a lot of feminists engaging in this communication style that to me feels very masculine. And it seems like, okay, they might be trying to advance women or trying to advance issues that are of concern to women, but they are also reinforcing the cultural hierarchy of placing masculinity over femininity. I want to be breaking that down. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Um, I hope this video can be thought-provoking and can spread this idea to more people. Yeah, thank you.